How's it going guys? My name is Jake Fogg and welcome back to episode number 17 of my FC Andorra Let's Play on Football Manager 2020. Before I do get into the video, I just want to say I um, appreciate all the support on the channel recently. Uh, again, decent subscribers over the weekend. I was getting, I got, I think, I know it doesn't sound like much, it sounds stupid, but I got one a day for about five days in a row, which really, really nice. You know, I've had good views over the weekend, even though I've not been uploading, even though I took a few days off because... Um, I was away for the weekend and I decided, you know what, I'll just take a few days off uh, rather than trying to get ahead of myself and then kind of focus now. I shifted my focus now towards um, getting videos ready for Christmas Eve and Boxing Day since obviously I'm going to be at home with my family, etc, etc during that time. So, um, yeah, so appreciate the support over the weekend. And if you're new around here, uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss an upload. And um, if you do enjoy the video, please uh, be sure to leave a like. It means a lot to me. It really helps out the channel. If we can get five likes on this video, that would be absolutely incredible. <laughs> Huge five likes, I know. <laughs> but anyway, uh, getting into this episode now. Starting off with on the transfer screen, as you can see, got a few regens coming in. Um, just did a little bit of looking around, you know, through youth teams and... Um, yeah, youth teams and second teams and lower division teams. So the first player that we're bringing in is Daniel Meister. You know, he's nothing he's nothing special. He's a 17-year-old German centre-back, but the thing that really drew me, drew me to him was that 20 determination. If I actually look at his reports, I think he's, yeah, he's one-star current ability, uh, four-and-a-half-star potential, which is very, very nice. He's not the most consistent player in the world, but like I said, that determination was what really swung me, if I'm being honest. Uh, if it was like if it was lower than that, I probably wouldn't have bothered, but I think because he's got that such high determination... He should reach that potential. He's got a decent personality. He's driven. Um, yeah, got some nice mentals about him. And he or, he already looks like a decent player. To me, he looks a bit better than one-star current ability. Um, I don't think he's massively, massively far behind some of the players that we've got at the moment. So I've got him coming in on a free transfer from Munster Under-19s. So that is number one. No, number two is a player that I'm actually quite excited about. Ask. Aske Fabricius, 17-year-old Danish central midfielder, can play holding mid, can play attacking mid. He is one and a half star current ability with five star potential. Again, plenty of room to improve. I know obviously I'm only a second division side, so five stars to me isn't necessarily fantastic, but it could be worth a little bit of money in the future, and I've got him on cheap wages. You know, so that's that's nice. And then player number three, Forsten Dossedal, another German, 17-year-old, uh, coming from Duisburg in Germany. Actually got some really nice stats again. 16 determination, good, good physical stats. His finishing is lacking, but that's something that we can train. He's got a really nice first touch, good passing, good technique, good dribbling. He's got all the makings of an advanced forward, which is obviously what I play. Just obviously needs to up a few of his actual shooting stats. Uh, likes finishing composure, his anticipation a little bit, but I think if I can, if I can get him trained up and train him right, I think I've got a uh, could have a really really nice player here. He is currently two star, two star current ability, five star potential, and it's not much of a risk picking him up on a free. So those are the free signings that I've made. And then one other thing which I forgot to mention in the last episode. Obviously, I haven't got my youth candidates yet. They don't come till April. But I have got my youth candidates preview. The first thing you'll notice, there's a fair bit of green here. Healthy number of full-backs, a lot of wingers. One goalkeeper looks like a great prospect, which is nice. We've already got one goalkeeper who's coming along quite nicely. That got in my first year, but I don't think he is really going to amount to much. At least one of our centre-backs looks promising. That is nice. And we have two forwards that are considered to be fine prospects. One good young Andorran goalkeeper... That could be at least one of our got. That could be the same player. And it says this is an excellent group of players coming through, which is really nice. Obviously, there's the, there's the negatives as well, but we don't need to look at them. They're not important. It's all about the positives. <laughs> but the last two years, I've actually had the... This is a very poor crop of players, unfortunately. So this is an excellent group of players coming through. Um, I quite like the look of. You know, it might not mean that we get tons of good players but it might mean you know it might mean actually sign more than one player from the youth candidates like I did last uh, last time but let's get into the results since uh, since we last met 
So after our 2-2 draw against Almeria in our first game back from the winter break, we played Cordoba, a fellow second division side in the Spanish Second Cup, fully rotated team. I was not bothered, to be honest, I just wanted my players to stay fit for the league. Unfortunately, Lions Foster and Ramadani both picked up injuries, which wasn't ideal. But we lost 1-0, game I wasn't particularly bothered about, so we'll just swiftly move on from that. We then played Zaragoza at home in the league. 2-1 win after falling behind in the 65th minute. Uh, Andres came off the bench, I believe. Yeah, Andres came off. <laughs> came on in the 66th minute, scored in the 70th minute. What a player. Giuseppe Leone scored the winner in the 75th minute. Deserved winners, all in all. And a uh, yeah, good win against a decent side. Well, we lost 4-1 at home to Barcelona B, to be expected. But to be fair, we gave them a decent game. They're just, they're incredible. Like, pfft, not much to it, really. They're fantastic. There's a reason why I'm pretty certain they've still not lost a game. And we're, what, like 25 games in? They're very, very good. You know, it was looking good. Well, they scored in the first minute, but we equalised in the sixth minute, but we never could put away any of our chances later on in the game. But it's a game I went into expecting to lose, and, yeah, we did just that. And then we followed that up with a game, 3-2 win away at Cadiz. A lot tighter than it should have been after being 3 nil up. 47 minutes in, they pulled two back, Andrew missed a penalty, and I just parked the bus basically. Um, yeah, we were absolutely cruising, but we let them back into it, but fortunately we just managed to hold on, and a good win in the end. Then we went away to Cordoba, the team that knocked us out of the cup. Andrew was up for double, we beat them 2 1. Again, they went ahead just before half time, but we two goals in fairly quick succession from Andrus. and that was that absolutely dominated them. Look at them stats. It fully, thoroughly, thoroughly <laughs> deserved win. Also, if my voice does sound a little bit ropey or there's any weird cuts, it is because I've got a little bit of a cough at the moment. And obviously, I'm trying to, uh, trying to, <laughs> trying to not let it get the better of me and get anything out of the video. But anyway, followed that up with the last game, um, last game before the game today. A one all draw at home to Valencia B. Absolutely dominated them. They went ahead in the second minute. Then we just could not score till Batista might have scored in the 90th minute. And I'm going to show you this goal. Because it was a pretty nice one. If it uh, wants to load up, generate the match report. You know, we'd been we'd been going at it, going at it for ages. As you can see, we've had lots of opportunities, but we just couldn't put the ball, uh, put any of our shots on target. Look at that. 23 shots, six on target. And this was oh, it's a little bit fast actually. Let me just <clears throat> Let me just knock that down a little bit. You can see here, Batista Meyer. What a finish that is. Absolutely unbelievable. Great player. If I actually have a look at him, he is now, well, a minute ago he was considered a five star player last time I looked, but he is just absolutely phenomenal. 7.53 average rating. If I actually compare it to last season, his returns haven't been as good. <clears throat> I see for 36 games last season, 13 goals and 15 assists. Obviously, that's in a weaker division. But this season, 25 games, 8 goals, 6 assists, and a 7.5. <gasps> pardon me, 7.53 average rating. He has been absolutely fantastic. So, with regards to the league table, <clears throat> as you can see there, we are currently sat in third place. So, in the automatics, um, ahead of Elche, who are on 42 points. So it's going well so far, but like I say, still the most important thing is this gap with Miranda's in eighth, who are uh, actually our opponents today. 36 points there on, so that leaves us 10 points away from being outside the playoffs, which at, which is now my minimum goal, the playoffs, with how it's gone this season. Anything less than that would be a huge disappointment. As you can actually see here, Andres is still in fantastic form, 21 goals, top scorer in the league, um, 15 goals for Ruiz behind him. And he's also the second highest average rating uh, in the league with Sergio Gomez on an 8.08. It's just unfair that he's playing in this league. He's earning 60,000 60, a week <laughs> at Barcelona. Absolutely ridiculous. Although he might have just been promoted to their first team. So maybe maybe he's not um, not someone we have to worry about anymore, which is nice. <laughs> is he still? Yeah, it looks like he's, looks like he's actually gone. Ah, oh, get in. Barcelona might actually lose a game now. But anyway, like I said, we are playing Mirandas today. <clears throat> a bit of dodgy form recently, actually. Is that Does that mean that they've lost... I think that means that they've lost the last... Yeah, they've lost the last three games. <clears throat> I mean, one of them was to the um, 
Real Sociedad, who last I checked were top of the La Liga, so it's not really uh, a team that you'd expect them to be. <laughs> Just double check this lineup. I think this is how I want it set up. It is indeed. So we're going with what you've probably probably were expecting at this point. Ban using net Nunez, Comas, Mai, and Hug as the back four. Gennaro next to Gonzalez in midfield. Batista Meyer on the right. Izzy on the left. Fidalgo in that number ten role, and Andres up front as the lone striker. Uh, with regards to the bench, I think, yeah, leave it like that. <clears throat> you can tell I've been using a pretty consistent side because they're all on 100% and no one else is anywhere near. <laughs> Although I have just started setting them all up to play in um, reserve matches. <clears throat> um, actually, I will just bring on... Bring him on for... I'll bring on Riverola for Brooking just in case I need to make a sub of any of these two guys but we're ready for the game submit the team and let's get into today's episode team talk wise as always just hand it to my assistant you've done an all right job there you've motivated two of them and that is good enough for me <clears throat> our morale's really high at the moment you know it's nice andres i'm pretty certain sorry i'm just take away from the game yeah his <clears throat> his morale is perfect it's always a nice sign well, what's not a nice sign is that Izzy's got injured very early on. That's not good. Uh, I don't know whether to play... You know what, I'm going to bring on Ramadani. Um, it's a bit of a risk. He's got very, very little match fitness. But ultimately, if Izzy is out for a, an extended period of time, potential foot injury, so it could just be like a, a bruise that he's a bit a little wuss about or a um, twisted ankle, sprained ankle. Could be as bad as a broken foot. Could be as bad as a broken ankle. Um, so, because I don't know the severity, I'm just going to play Ramadan. He needs the match fitness because he ultimately is going to be playing um, instead of Izzy if he can stay fit and if Izzy is out for an extended period of time. But that is not a good way, good way to start off this game. Not much happening so far. And this is actually the first highlight of the game. It's out wide, but we're coming on the attack now. Fidalgo plays it out to Andres. He's one on one with the keeper and he hits it straight at him. And these highlights are just a little bit quick. So uh, let me just knock it down one. Because, yeah, that's how I like it. I've just been putting it on a little bit quicker. So when I'm playing games in between episodes, they just go by a little quicker. But obviously for the actual episodes, I want them to be played at a nice, nice neutral speed. <clears throat> As we're on the ball here, Fidalgo. Gennaro on the right, into Fidalgo. Back to Gennaro. He gets tackled, but Gonzalez wins it back to Gennaro again. But he's out wide to Hug, who's going to cut inside. Finds Gennaro again. To Fidalgo, what a ball through to Batista Meyer. What can he do with it? He gets tackled, but the clearance only goes as far as Hug. Into Ramadani, the substitute. Back to Gonzalez. Out to Hug. This is a long highlight. <clears throat> and he's been fouled. And it's going to be a penalty, and it will be Andres taking the penalty. Andres steps up. This will be his 22nd goal in the league if he can put it away. Missed his last penalty and he's missed another. It's a good save from the keeper, to be fair. Wasn't a bad penalty. But that is uh, it's not ideal. Would have been nice to uh, nice to get a little bit of a lead. Would have been nice to get a bit of a lead. Would have been nice to take the lead. It's probably um, what, I would, <laughs> what I should have said there. Oh, Jesus. But Fidal goes on the ball now. Tackled by Gonzalez, who's already booked, and that means he is, in fact, going to be sent off. So Miranda's down to 10 men late on in the first half. So we're going to play against 10 men for um, just over 50 minutes, actually, as Mai goes close with that header. If we can nick a goal before half time, that'd be great. It's not looking like we will, but I'll take I'll take nil nil uh, and never man down. So into the halftime team talk. Just to encourage them. No point telling them I'm disappointed in them. Because uh, we've been playing well. Just not been able to put the ball in the back of the net. And unfortunately, Andres, because of that penalty miss, is on a shocking overall um, rating. As a header from Marty just goes over the bar there. Gennaro looks like he might have suffered poor knee ligaments. That's not great, is it? <laughs> oh, dear. Come on, let's get something going here. Right, I'm going to make a couple of changes here. I don't like taking Andres off because he's so good, but I'm going to bring on Ape, give him a little bit of a chance, <clears throat> get Kel in for Fidalgo, just freshen it up a little bit uh, up top, and hopefully can grab the uh, grab the all-important winner in these last 20 minutes. 
It's 15 minutes to go. Elche losing to Almeria as well, so a win here would be absolutely huge. As Elche <coughs> are the team that are currently in fourth place just behind us. Hug into Ramadani. Dawdles on it a little bit. Ape, go on. Oh, he's just passed it to the keeper there, man. It's not good. Really should be really should be winning this game uh, it's not looking like we are going to do either is it, just three minutes left last minute and well, it's going to be a nil-nil draw uh, I've got a real problem with our shots on target get loads of shots off the game but never get them in a never get enough shots on target we rely too much on Andres for goals and when when he doesn't perform just not good at all so I'm actually going to do I'm actually going to change my training about here I know yeah, recovery no recovery for you you're in some endurance training there you go confirm that yes but only this once this is what I like to do when um, <clears throat> if we don't you know when we're struggling with uh, scoring and whatnot I like to switch around the uh, training a little bit get some chance conversion going in um, I'll do another. Now here I'll do. What am I going to do? Match preparation. I like to go attacking movement. Um, I don't really know <coughs> how much of a difference this kind of stuff actually makes, but yeah, this is what I quite often do if we're having a poor, um, poor. What's it called? I can't think poor finishing, poor, when we can't score, or if, if we're poor defensively, I'll change my training to be defensive, if we're, um, there we go, chance conversion, get that in, get that training, all sorted, so yeah, it's a tough game as well against Espanyol, <coughs> well, that was a pretty dreadful, dreadful game to have on this episode, uh, nice, <laughs> nice nil-nil draw, um, we are currently still sat in third place, and it actually, everyone's played their games pretty much. That's important. So we will finish. <coughs> we will finish this round of fixtures, three points clear of uh, Gihon in fourth. With how many games are there in this league? It's Twenty-two teams, so forty-two games that'd be. With uh, sixteen games remaining, so we're still in a very good position. Um, it would have been nice to capitalise on it a little bit. And we've got Espanyol away next, which is going to be an absolutely horrible game. But that is where I am going to end off this episode. As always, thank you for watching. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to leave a like. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And I'll catch you in the next episode.